Baby, baby, it's Shaka being that mafioso that done died of Cutters Ninja with an untucked swinger behind his back, aka Shaka Black, aka Shaka being that, aka Shaka Fuego, aka Shaka Flame, man. And we got my boy Zab Judah in the barber shop with Matt Hoffa, man. I'm, I'm glad to see my boy Zab Judah getting some uh, shine, you know what I'm saying? He he been, he need to start shining like the back of his head. You know, Zab Judah was that boy, man. He did his thing uh, in the ring for a little while, you know. So let's see what he got to talk about, man. My boy need to shine like the back of his head. I make hits with the so best mother, Zab Judah. You probably didn't have the normal anxiety that most parents have when their son is first getting in the ring and getting into a competitive sport like boxing and fighting. Like you see a lot of. He almost knocked the Mayweather like, ass. Oh God, baby, just. I mean, he ain't careful, almost knocked him out, but he rocked him. Would, had a different philosophy when you started fighting and took it serious. I mean, yeah, it was. It was like it was like the wind was good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But see, my pop. My parents are very competitive, so so it never really affected me until you lost. And like, mm. man, you could do better now. Right? Zab Judah looks like the perfect Dragon Ball Z character. I think his name was Pupiter. I can't remember his name, but that's who he always reminded me of. Mm. You get come he used to be right? Goku's why stop, rival. Why you stop punching? Mm. Go to the body. Yeah, get down and go to the body. You like, damn, you sitting there like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, so it's not like the, you know how go to the body. Go home and they like. This would be okay, you know. People nah. win, people lose. You know, if none yeah. of that, it was like, yeah. that's not you. One yeah. ball head to another. Get over more, move your head more, do this, do that, do that. Like it was in the game, so it was more scientifically engineered to know what the hell is going on. You know what I mean? Right. And let me stop of talking for you. Scolding me, ball. they corrected me. Say, and so that's where my, 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 you know, my, my, my drive came from. I was like, you know, cool. If I ever lost, anybody, my friend, anybody know if he ever, if he ever took a loss, he in the gym on Monday. Cause you know, fight, boxing right. fights on Saturday. I was in the gym on Monday, back at it, training at it. Cause one thing I learned that if you have a loss, and we all gonna have them, you win some. Don't dwell on the hiccup. You lose some. You gotta dwell on what's what's coming next. You gotta be able to take your losses just like your wins. And I was able to do that. I was able to go, okay, cool. That's over. That's done. That was a project. That's finished. What's next? And I was always, I was always able in, you know, say rather easy, wipe it out of my mind and just right. keep it going forward. Look, and that's good because the main thing, like Mayweather said, you want to have all your faculties after you get done with your boxing career. You know what I'm saying? There's some guys who can barely talk the same that they used to talk and all type of stuff. So I'm glad to see uh, Zab still, you know, uh, he didn't really get it. He didn't really get beat up bad. You know what I'm saying? But to see him with all his faculties, you know what I'm saying, still having some money, still doing his thing, it's a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? So people see me like, damn. Just lost the fight. He out. He outside walking the street, <laughs> shopping, like doing it. You know, it's like because you got it. You got to erase it. People that sit right. around and take those bad losses and can't dwell on it. They sit in there, sit in the house, close the shades. They come out the house three hundred pounds. Come out the house stressed out. Or then you're gonna lose again. Sick, going to the hospital. I, I, and I never wanted to be that. I never wanted to be that. Well, you got your money at the end of the day. So was it you that um, wanted to get into boxing, or was it your family that wanted you to get into boxing? I think that my my father introduced us. And through my hard work and dedication and motivation, he seen that and he just put the, I'm gonna put, you put the, the gas in the car. Yeah, yeah. Remember, Pac was a fighter already. Right. So I can remember walking. This is a true story. I walked. My father was fighting. Um, is he from uh, New York? His name was Anthony Salerno in the Garden. My father was a champion. He had three belts. He came out. He let his sons hold the belt. We came out to the bank. I told my dad I had an epiphany. When, when he was coming out, they was yelling, Judah, Judah. And I, I felt like they was talking to me. I was only like eight years old. I was young, you know what I'm saying? They was, was talking, talking to me. you through him. And, he, and when he got me in the room, he, he said, Legacy. I told him this. And he, and he said, just keep working hard. And one day, it will be you. Just that he don't know what he did to me that, at that conversation. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? He right. don't know that whole experience of the walkout, of the going to the ring with your dad, the screaming, the trial. It, it, it put a battery in me that was like, oh, I can have this. Then hey. being neighbors down the street from Mike Tyson, seeing Mike Tyson come through drop top Rolls Royces and all that, we were huh. like, oh, from boxing? Yeah, he's from New York. Pernell Whitaker, being able to, for these guys to be tangible, me, me, me being was a young nice. kid, 16 years old, 17 years old, able to pick the phone up and call Pernell Sweet P Whitaker. This was, the best this was, this was, this was the time. best, this was, at this, he was a pound for pound, the greatest at this time. Right. You know what I mean? Hmm. That did something to my ego, to my soul, to everything. I was like, yo, I gotta go get this. So when I Hey, pay attention to how instrumental it is to be a father in your kid's life. You know what I'm saying? Because some of the greatest, most of the greatest fighters um, 
have their father that the father is the catalyst to greatness you got mayweather you got haney you got zab judah you know what i'm saying and then you got sean porter too so if you don't see the trend man it's you can make greatness by just planting that seed but we're gonna keep my guys so now i'm 16 15 spawn with Pernell with a good learning moving and grooving when i get back to my house to my regular guy to my regular peers guys that's on my level they fool they fool Mm. They fool. I'm scarily here now. Now I take another trip. I'm going with Tyson. Uh. Tyson came. Camp. I'm watching Mike. Mike coming to the gym. And the way I'm sparring with Tyson. Body niggas. No, no, you hear me? Body <laughs> niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm About so, a so week ago. So Mike coming to the gym. Body. Knock him out. Three, four dudes lined up. Knock all the guys out. I'm standing there. Zab is just time to train. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to try to mimic this shit that he just did. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I don't know if he can mimic. Shit happens. I'm like, it worked. That's it. Mm. All this laid back, trying to Scooby Doo shit. No, get in there, just get rid of this nigga. Right. And that's what I started doing. Now, wow. And so now, I'm with Mike. He's the, it's when he came home, he's the, we traveling the world, we going everywhere. He's the attitude, the energy, the everything. I'm Mike Tyson. You get in there, you can't be I'm the undisputed Mike. fighter. You can't be doing this shit like with nobody. You gotta get I'm in the there must and undisputed. emulate <laughs> the energy that you've been around. Right. And that's what I did. I was just knowing it from, from sparring to fighting, to every, I mean, I mean, in a real fight, in a sparring match, like guys, know you call me for sparring, shit could get real. What was that experience like meeting Mike? Shit. Well, I met Mike when I was like eight years old. So I was eight, like I said, um, I was, uh, we was home in the house in Brownsville, and my oh. dad woke us up. It was like three in the morning. He said, "Come here, I got something for y'all." Mike was standing right there in the house. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I remember <laughs> I used to, you know, like I still stutter. I used to stutter real bad when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like like Wingate days, I was quiet in Wingate days. Why? Not because I was just cool. I couldn't talk. I was stuttering. I was like, ain't nothing no, no, bad, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I remember telling Mike, I, I, I'm going to be champion, champion, you know, champion I, I, world. I, I. And Mike looked at me like, yeah, just, just work hard. Again, another person. They don't know what they did to me with that. Right. Planted that seed. Planted that seed. So what I always do, the reason why I'm saying this is because wherever I go at in the world, I always drop seeds on, on, on kids and young people coming up that's trying. They want to give advice. Tell, I, you let them know. They can do it. They can do it. Uh huh? Put it in their hands and watch them blossom and watch them do it. You know, yeah. Watch it blossom. All they need is to be told. Watch you somebody. Be it's almost like my godson, Devin Haney. Everybody know Devin Haney. Yeah. Y'all yeah. yeah, watched him. He was 11 years old. He carried my undisputed championship ring belt to the ring. Look at him now. He's the undisputed champion of the world. You know what I'm right. saying? When you just, when a person is geared up and they see, they see, like, like you know, life is. People grow up, they see outside every day. You know, in New York City, you grow up, you see this shit every day. You like, you don't really have a lot of hopes and ambitions and dreams. But when you right. step outside, you go somewhere else and you see something else, you're like, wait a minute. I know it's we over possible. here right now, but I just seen the homie over here. I went to their crib. They live in some big shit. They got a backyard, they got a front yard. I see, you know what I'm saying? You that's know, that's motivation. different in uh, and New York. I, come home <laughs> I, I was able to be around these type of interviews. Hey, you know, you New York is crazy when you got a backyard and a front yard, and that's something different. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know what I'm saying? I remember when Pernell Whitaker, he was, to me, he was the first person I ever seen with the, the shit that Biggie was talking about, the, the big body S Benz. Yeah. See, this shit delivered. This, this, was in, this was in the 90s, bro. This was like 92. I was like, oh, that's the shit Big talk about. Big I'm money. Riding around in it, but well, tangible. You see what I'm saying? When you right. give a person something and they're able to touch it, grasp it, feel it, it's real. It's different. It lands they different. Can, they can mimic it. It hit different. It, it do it hit different. It's, it's hard to mimic something. We're looking at it on television, you're looking at it as like television is what we look at. It, it's a box of entertainment. Yeah, it's you a say box that of entertainment time, man. that keep us good. You can't so, rap about it if you ain't live it. Yeah, right. you can't. You know what right. I'm saying? So you know, and here in my raps, you break down the bar for bar. Everything is fact. Right? I ain't doing no sabers and submarines jumping off the yacht. I'm not doing none of that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing none of that. I'm right. not, when I'm speaking, I'm speaking real facts. I'm telling you about my experiences, my walks. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, I, and that's why I said. My joint is gonna be who better than me? <laughs> Come on, man! I was outside. I was outside at early age, moving around. You know right, what I right, mean? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood. Listen, man, Zab Judah, bro. I know it's more pieces to that, man, cause. You know, growing up around the greats, the legends, you got no choice but to be great or some form of great. You know what I mean? 
That's why birds of a feather flock together. You want to surround yourself by the best people you can. Because if you the if you are in a room full of three rich people, you undoubtedly will become the fourth, and vice versa. If you're in a room full of dumb three dumbasses, you're gonna be the fourth dumbass. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to get that out, man. To plant those seeds and do your thing, man. Uh, it's always room for motivation, improvement, and you know, world domination. Ha. It's Shaka being that mafioso, the dot the coach ninja with an untucked swinger behind his back, aka Shaka Black, aka Shaka being that, aka Shaka Flame, man. Peace.